Hey everyone, in this video we're going to learn how to graph functions on a restricted domain. More specifically, linear functions, as that's the only type of function that we've learned how to graph so far. Now this picks up from the last video where we talked about the domain and range of a function and the different ways to define them. Now we're going to be given a domain and a function to graph and we have to combine the ideas together. Our first example, graph the function on its restricted domain and then state the range of the graph. So the equation or the function is y equals 3 over 2x minus 6, and the domain is x is greater than 0. So the function they gave us is a line. Now they didn't write f of x equals, they wrote y equals, but we've discussed how those are synonymous with one another and can be interchanged. If we were to graph this line without a domain restriction, we would identify the slope as 3 over 2, a point on the line, is the y-intercept, which from this equation can be identified as the point 0, negative 6, because this is in slope-intercept form. And normally, we would go plot the y-intercept, and then start plotting points using the slope 3 over 2, so up 3 and over 2 boxes. And we would go in the other direction as well. But I'm not going to go past x equals 0. And the reason for that is the domain restriction x is greater than 0. So we only want to plot points on the line where the x value is greater than 0. So that's only to the right of the y-intercept. right? x equals 1, x equals 2, x equals 3. Those are x values that are greater than 0. Now we do have to deal with the fact that x is greater than 0, not greater than or equal to 0. And the way we'll deal with that is similar to how we dealt with it when we were graphing a solution set on the number line. We're going to make that point at the y-intercept an open circle. Now that's going to indicate that we're not equal to 0, but only greater than 0. And now we're going to connect the points on the line that we've drawn, but we're only going to include an arrow on one part of our line. So going from the y-intercept through the points that we've plotted, there is our line. Notice there's only an arrow on this side of the line, no arrow here, because we don't want to go past zero, right? We don't want any value that's less than zero. Now identifying the range, Remember, we work our way from the bottom of the graph up. So the lowest y value on our graph is negative 6. Well, not negative 6, but that's the lowest point on the graph. The y values are all greater than negative 6. So that's exactly what we're going to state as the range. y is greater than negative 6. Now, we could choose to write this in interval notation and might as well practice with this. So that's an inequality. If they asked us for interval notation, we would say negative 6 to infinity. We're not equal to negative 6, so parentheses on that side. We can't be equal to infinity, so parentheses there. And then we had one more way to express the range based off a of graph. That was set builder notation. So curly bracket y such that y is greater than negative 6. Now in this particular example, since they gave us an inequality as the domain, I would have stated the range as an inequality as well, but all of these are correct answers. So basically, what is this question? This question is giving us practice graphing a line, incorporating the new concepts of domain and range in. So it's just a little more challenging than what we were doing before when we were graphing our lines. Next, same directions, the function y minus 4 equals negative 2 times the quantity x plus 1, and the domain is negative 2 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 4. So the function, or the line, is in point-slope form, so we'll identify our two key pieces of information, and that's the fact that the slope is negative 2, and a point on the line is negative 1, 4. So again, normally, we would go negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 
and start plotting our slope of negative 2, or points using our slope of negative 2. But now we have to plot points by using the domain restriction that they gave us. So negative 2 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 4. Well, that's negative 1, so let's start by going backwards. So instead of down 2, we'll go up 2 and to the left 1, and we'll stop there, because that's x equals negative 2. I don't want to go any further than that. Then I go back, negative 2, slope of negative 2, slope, so down 2 to the right 1, down 2 to the right 1. So right now I'm at x equals 1, x equals 2, I'm at x equals 3, so I should only go one more point. So down 2 to the right 1, and that's x equals 4. So I've only plotted the points such that x is between negative 2 and 4 inclusive. So now we're going to connect our points from x equals negative 2 to x equals 4. And I'll fix this just so it looks a little bit better going through our points. There we have it. Now notice there are no arrows. We don't put an arrow here. We don't put an arrow there because we're only graphing on this restricted domain. So our range working from the lowest y value up, so the lowest y, y value, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6. So we have negative 6 is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to, so we work our way up the graph. And the highest y value, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, is positive 6. So there is our range. Now, we could have done this a different way. So let's say we don't understand why I stopped where we plotted our points. You could set up a table of values instead. And you could have said negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Plugged each of these x values into the equation, into the function, and got the output. But now I want you to weigh those two options. The way that we had done it previously, or filling out this table and then plotting the points. I think the way we originally did it, by using the fact that it was in point slope form, identifying the slope and the point, and then graphing only on these x values, was more efficient than filling out this table would be. Okay, so just something to keep in mind. They're both correct, but one way is definitely more efficient, going to save you some time. Our next example, same directions, y equals 3x plus 2. Our domain is negative 3 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 1. x is an integer now. So we'll deal with that part last. Let's continue the same way that we had been doing. So we have our line. The slope is 3. A point on the line is the y-intercept at 0, 2. So we'll plot 0, 2, which is in our domain. And we'll graph a slope of 3, so up 3 to the right, 1. I'll stop going that way, because that's already x equals 1. Now working in the other direction, so down 3 to the left, 1. Down 3 to the left, 1. Down 3 to the left, 1. And we'll stop there, because that's x equals negative 3. Now let's say you just plotted a bunch of points. You could always go back with an eraser and erase the ones that are not in this domain. That's definitely another option. Okay, so don't think about the domain, just plot the points as you normally would, and then erase the points that are not in the domain restriction that they gave you. Now we have to deal with the fact that x is an integer. Well, what are the integers in this domain? That would be, well, let's set up a table of values just in case you wanted to do it this way. So the integers, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, and 1. And we get our y values. So plugging negative 3, we'd have negative 9 plus 2, so that's negative 7. And then negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1, 2, and 5. So this is how you would complete the table. Now, these are the only x values that are integers on this restricted domain. So these are the only points that should be on our graph. So now that brings us to our next question. Do we connect the points with a line? These are the only x values that are integers in this domain? And the answer to that question is no. We should not connect our points.
points with a line. Because let's just focus in on a little piece of this graph. If I connected these two points here from x equals 0 to x equals 1, those would be all the points like x equals 0.5, x equals 0.9, all x values that aren't integers, inputs that are not integers. So we don't want to include them in our graph. So we don't want to draw a line. So now we need to state the range of this particular function. So we can do it in two ways. We can list the y values from least to greatest. We've already done that in the table. So we can just say negative 7, negative 4, negative 1, 2, and 5. And that's going to be the simplest way. So that's the only way that I'm going to, to suggest doing this. The other way is a little bit more complex, and I don't think I don't think it would be as easy for us to wrap our head around. So let's stick with what's simple, right? List out the outputs in this domain. So negative 7, negative 4, negative 1, 2, and 5 are the range. Perfect. Graph the function on the given restricted range, y equals negative x plus 5. The range is negative 3 is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to 1. So they've changed it up on us a little bit. Instead of giving us the domain, they now gave us the range. Huh, well, we're not used to inputting y values to graph an equation, graph a line, right? If we look at our equation, we know the slope is negative 1, we know the y-intercept is the point 0, 5, but we're not sure how to incorporate this. So my suggestion would be to solve for the x value, the input, that outputs negative 3 and 1. So for instance, substituting negative 3 in for y, we have negative x plus 5. We can subtract 5 from both sides, so we have negative 8 equals negative x, so 8 equals x. So that means on this graph, on this function, is the point 8 comma negative 3. And then we can do the similar argument for y equals 1, so substituting 1 for y, and then negative x plus 5. So we can subtract 5 from both sides, negative 4 equals negative x, divide both sides by negative 1, 4 equals x, so the point 4 comma 1 is on our graph. Now, that's enough information. Think back to graphing lines. We've graphed plenty of lines where we found two points on the line and we connected those two points. So we have 4 comma 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, comma, 1, and then 5, 6, 7, 8, negative 3. Now, our range is only from negative 3 to 1. So we're going to connect these two points with a line with no arrow. Right? We don't want an arrow. We don't want any y value outside of the range that they gave us. Okay. Now, they didn't tell us to find the domain, but as good practice, let's do that. The domain, we're working from left to right. The lowest x value is 4. The largest x value is 8. So we'd have 4 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 8. So they changed up the problem a little bit on us here. They gave us the range instead of the domain, but we were still able to work our way through the problem and get our graph. Our last question, the function f of x equals negative 2x plus 7 is defined on the domain, negative 1 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 6. What is the maximum value of the range? So we could of course graph this and then decide based off the graph, and that's always an option. But let's try to reason out an approach here without a graph. So the first thing looking at our function is that it's a line, right? So it's a line. And it's a line with a slope of negative 2. So think, if you work from left to right, what a line with a negative slope looks like. We could even draw one. A line with a negative slope looks like that. Right? It wouldn't have arrows here because we have a restricted domain, so we can turn these into points. Okay, so that's what a line 
what the negative slope looks like. So where is the maximum or the largest y value or output going to be? Well, it's going to be at the first input in our domain, which in this case is going to be negative one. Right, so the maximum value occurs when x equals negative one. So we can evaluate the function at negative one. So we have negative two times negative one plus seven, which is two plus seven, which is nine. So the maximum value in the range of this function on the domain negative one is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to six, is nine. And we can make a similar argument for a positive slope line and go through the same reasoning and decide where the maximum value if the line had a positive slope. Okay. And again, we could always graph this line and come up with our answer from there, but I think it's nice to reason through where that maximum value would occur. Then they follow this up with what would the range be if the domain was changed to be the set of all real numbers? So if we didn't have points here for a restricted domain, if we turn those into arrows, so we can draw a picture. So if we turn those into arrows, how would that change the range? Well, the arrows indicate that we're going to continue infinitely down and infinitely up on our graph. So the lowest y value would be negative infinity. The highest y value would be positive infinity. So I'm running it in interval notation right now. So that would be the range in interval notation, which is just a way, another way to write the set of all real numbers. So if we took those points and turned them into arrows and changed the domain to the set of all real numbers, the range would also change to be the set of all real numbers because our function is a line. As we study different functions that are going to have different graphs, the answers to these questions are going to change. But for right now, as we're incorporating just linear functions into our discussion of domain and range, these are two nice questions to wrap that discussion up. So rewatch any parts of the video if you weren't sure about our approach or why the answer turned out that way, and then practice. Go through examples so that you see a bunch of different presentations, different changes in the questions, and you've wrapped your head truly around the idea of finding the domain and range. Click the Amazon link down below for my algebra workbook so you can practice on your own. Give the video a like, and before you go, click that subscribe button so you can see more videos just like this. Thanks for watching.